We're just having our sunrise swim. The sun's just popped the horizon and we're enjoying not uh, not being on the bottom of the food chain for a change. Well, never the bottom. Not the bottom, just not being the, being on the top. Being on the top. <laughs> You can easily make out the bottom in 12 metres of water here. It's just perfect.
It's moving house day today on Marul and we are currently finding a new backyard. We're ready for new territory. What we really need is a good secure anchorage right in the middle of good snorkeling but with a clear and straightforward exit if we get a Norwest blow associated with a little pressure cell coming in. Yep. That's, that's all I want. I just want to be able to point 270 degrees on the compass and <laughs> put the throttle down and know that there's nothing on there. Here we see parrotfish and they take their name from their habit of swimming with their pectoral fins like flying, their bright colours and their teeth being fused into a parrot-like beak. They feed by chewing off chunks of coral and grind it up in order to digest algae attached to it. The ground limestone passes through them and you can see it coming out the back of them in a cloud of sand. This makes them a very important recycler of calcium carbonate for future corals. Surgeon fish also graze on algae. These fish go by the name of zebra, or sometimes clown tanks. As well as swimming in schools over the reef, they maintain discrete patches of algae and defend them against other fish. These convict tanks use a strategy of using their great numbers to overwhelm the defenders, each one trying to eat as much as they can before they're chased away. Anemone fish pairs usually consist of a dominant female and a smaller male. Now all of them start out as male and they'll only become female when the dominant fish dies. This sex change strategy is pretty common with a lot of reef fish. These paddle tails look fairly tasty and in other parts of Australia you can eat them no problem. But they are a no-take species in Queensland as they have been linked to ciguatera poisoning along with red bass and Chinaman fish. If you're in a rough neighbourhood, it can pay to have a bodyguard, even if you have to improvise as this trumpet fish demonstrates. Titan triggerfish are well known to divers for their aggressive defensive territory and their strong bite. Usually it's because a pair is defending a nest and that's the case here. This fish is being an attentive parent, checking the nest for dead eggs and ensuring really well oxygenated water flows over the egg bundle using its fins and jaw muscles.
A lot of what we do involves risk assessment. Now while sea snakes are incredibly venomous, and one bite could probably kill you, they are also very docile, non-aggressive and reluctant to use their precious venom. Sea snakes are very curious creatures and if you're snorkeling and one approaches you, don't be alarmed. Just hold still, move your feet so they go and investigate them, and then often you can just gently push them down with your fins and they'll go away. Alright, so that was Ashmore Reef, had a ball, um, it was really worth the trip, but it's time to go. We've got uh, severe tropical cyclone Gitter down south of around 20 degrees south uh, latitude, and there's also another cyclone developing over in Western Australia. They don't affect us directly, but indirectly they're causing a westerly flow to go over the top of, uh, the top of northern Australia there, so we're sort of working to windward <laughs> yet again, that's what we do. Um, and we're gonna, instead of taking a more direct route back to Thursday Island, we're gonna go up through the top passage um, and then down again. Because if it stays westerly, then we'll have a close reach. And if it goes to the Norwest, like I'm hoping it does, then we'll have a beautiful beam reach and maybe even a spinnaker run down it. Um, and then a close reach into, into TI itself. So that's it. We're going back to civilization. We, we forgot to upload a video. So if you're thinking back to February, which is what it is now, February 16, hope you had a good Valentine's Day. You might think back and go, oh, that's right. I thought, I thought those crazy free rangers were missing in action. Well, we sort of were, but we were okay. We're heading back now. Here's another look at uh, cruising. The, it's very glamorous. So we got Pascal down there. She's found a nice comfy spot in the, the rock and roll of going to weather. It's the lowest point, isn't it? People often end up on the galley floor. But my uh, my chief mate's also got an ear infection. So... He's out of action. He's out of action. Yeah. We've got her on antibiotics and all sorts of drugs. So we'll see how she pulls through. I reckon by the time we're back home, close to nice food and beer should be as good as gold you just wait and see yeah, right. oh good morning so we're on a starboard tack so if you're new to sailing, that means the wind's coming over the right hand or starboard side of the boat. We're on a starboard uh, tack, we're close hauled, we're just trying to clear some reefs. Um, and then I'm going to tack around, go up and try and get into the, the shipping channel. Last night we had a bit of a fortuitous shift in the wind um, and I was able to follow our old track through the reef and have a bit of a shortcut. Knock, knocked about 70 miles off the the overall journey actually so that's um, that's a good result there is a danger when you do that if you're following a GPS track that you've laid down during the day if your GPS has a failure 
um, you can be stuck. We have two. <laughs> right? So, um, the batteries and everything else like that's in good condition. So if a capacitor blew up or something like that, then uh, we had the other GPS and both of them have the track on there. So a little bit of a backup. But anyway, we've got 70 miles to go to get to Thursday Island. That's as the crow flies. At the moment, we've got that westerly airstream that I spoke about before. I listened to the weather. Um, they're saying a low pressure system is actually moving up and that might shift the wind a little bit to the northwest. If that happens, then I will be cheering because um, that 70 miles could easily turn into 140 miles if we got attacked the whole way. But um, no, it's, it's looking all right. It's pretty settled. It's only, it's only 10 knots. Um, if we weren't close hauled and we weren't making our apparent wind, we'd actually be going quite slow. So this isn't bad. I'm not too worried about that. But we're making water. The scales will get up anytime soon. She had a bit of a, a night watch through the reef, so she's probably a little bit frazzled. Um, yeah, it's all looking pretty good. So we'll just see how the day pans out. We're hoping for that nor'wester shift at Salem. second day returning home back to Thursday Island from the Outer Reef. Um, we've been going pretty well. We've got to pay a bit of attention around here because there's lots of reefs and little islands but it's doing okay. And um, yeah we're pushing at the moment we're pushing tide. We're in the middle of the tide now. Um, it's an ebb tide so we've lost all the speed. I think we're only doing about three knots now. We were doing five knots before we didn't have to push any tide. That's alright. We'll be coming up to the shipping channel soon, so I'm keeping my eye out for any ships, but I haven't seen any so far. We might actually make our way down the shipping channel, because that's the tack that we need. When, when Troy gets up, we'll decide on that. We haven't had any rain for a while, so we've got the water maker running, and uh, fortunately the sun is just belting out, so we're making 10 amps at the moment through the solar panels. So that's giving us plenty of power to power the fridge and the water maker to give us plenty of fresh water. Um, yeah, we were a bit worried because obviously our wind generator broke um, yeah, three or four weeks ago, so we're waiting on parts to repair that when we get back to Thursday Island. But with the sun out like this, it's all good. Well, here we are at sunset. <coughs> Our voice is going and we are still hard at work. We've just been uh, tacking, the wind has stayed to the west, it, it didn't get any northerly component whatsoever today, so once again, well done Bureau of Meteorology. Um, so what have we been doing? Just having a wine. Let's not have a wine. Well, how about that? Sunset. We're still hard at work, tacking our way to west against a consistently westerly wind, there's, there's been no shift in it. Um, and also been battling an ebb tide. So it's a couple of knots in that. So in the last few hours we've been making two knots towards our objective despite sailing at like four and a half to five knots, but our tacks have been really, really pretty open, 130, 140 because of that ebb tide. So we'll, we'll try and close them back up to 90 now at the slack and flooding tide. If you look at our GPS you can see a little bit of a curve there as as the tide starts to fall away. But I mean um, comparing the compass which is 314 and then uh, you know making 334 so <laughs> it's 20, 20 degrees of leeway. So it's going to take a while to get back to Thursday Island. We've still got another day out here even though it's less than 40 miles um, we're going to be tacking so that's going to make it 80 in We'll probably hit another ebb tide, so I, I don't doubt that that'll throw another few hours on. So probably get in there about this time tomorrow, and, unless unless something unforeseen happens, like the wind completely drops out. <laughs> but I don't know. I suppose we can motor then. All right, back to it. Well, we tacked all last night 
into a consistent westerly. Um, and at six o'clock this morning, we pulled up just in the lee of this island here um, because the tidal streams here in the Torres Straits are really, really strong. Um, and and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about them because they don't just follow the tides like in normal places. They are very distinct. So if you're coming to TI, we'll talk a bit more about it and I'll let you know where you can find some more information that might be of use. As you can see, we've got up now, it's 10.30, it's time to go. The tidal streams have switched, it's 16 nautical miles, we made it. 16 nautical miles short of port. Um, and now we're gonna have to motor sail in. We'll just hoist the main sail. There's just the faintest, faintest of breezes, still from the west, <laughs> so nothing changes. But um, yeah, I'm ready for the beer. If you enjoyed this video please click the like button because it makes YouTube more likely to recommend our channel to others. Also don't forget to check out the description of the video because it's packed with information like where to find all the great music in this episode, links to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, as well as links to make a donation to us through PayPal or become a patron of Free Range Sailing and receive exclusive access to additional content.